and you see where the man of God and his wife are working for the fulfillment of the assignment that God has given to them, you know that they understand quite clearly that who they are, they are not in of themselves, right. but they are because of God. Right. And the mission that they have and for assignment is that which has been ordained of God. And since it's been ordained of God, there is divine presence. Yes, right? yes. Because they're not here simply because they can speak or teach and organize. They are here for other reasons. Right. Right. And the reason, most assuredly, that they are here is that God saw something in them. Yeah. 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 Way before they were born. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Now that within itself seems to be a little difficult because how can God see anyone before they are born. He did speak about Jeremiah and, and uh, he saw him let him know that, that, that I, I knew you before you were formed. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I knew you before you were formed and if he knew Jeremiah before he was formed, right. it seems to me that he also knew them. Uh, you know, even, even, even before they sperm and the egg got together, right. he knew them. Right. As a matter of fact, he's the one who calls the life to be yeah. right. when the sperm and egg got together. Yeah. You know, that had been sperm and egg together and nothing happened. Right. In this case, the right thing happened <laughs> for the right person for whom he had designed yeah. for an assignment even as of today. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, he understands that uh, when Jesus declared, upon this rock, I will build my church, yes, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah. When we think about God's church, God's church is not just a group of people who meet together and declare some truth, or they meet together from an organizational structure and say that we belong. His church represents a group of people who are baptized believers, persons who are born again, and who are willing to walk in holiness. It's not so much that they have become perfect in who they are, because we know in accordance with the word of God, there's a five-fold ministry that brings about perfection in accordance with the Ephesians 4 and 11. So we know that we are moving into perfection. I do understand that the word of God says be ye perfect because I am perfect. I understand that. But notice it says be ye did say you are. So then we have to understand that we have to come to some resolve of being made perfect in him. But in the meantime, we have to walk in holiness. And so then we need somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. Who can bring us to that level of holiness? Because absent of the Holy Ghost, a pastor has not the ability to bring anybody beyond where he is. If he has not the Holy Ghost, if he does not walk in holiness, it's difficult for him to lead people into holiness. So when we come to this church here, and the church was established, and thank God for the elder Remus uh, 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 Smith. We thank God for what he has done over the years that he was here. The foundation that he laid, uh -huh, and the walls that he built. Thank God for that. Thank God for the roof that he put on. I'm talking about spiritual things. Thank God for the roof that he put on, and all these things that he has done uh, so that when God 
was ready for John, excuse me, I know it's, I know it's superintendent, when he was ready for John to come forth. Yes, yes, yes. He didn't have to come to a field. Right. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have to come to a field. He came to a building structure. And a building structure may not have been all of what he wanted to be, but then again, it wasn't supposed to be. Because it could not become what it was supposed to be until he came, because God ordained him to bring it to where it's supposed to be.
Well, well, let me just go ahead and read the scripture. Because I want to help those who don't believe I've done anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> now unto him that is able to do and see abundantly above all that you ask of me according to the power that work in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Now we begin on the same one we do, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask of thee. It's beyond our imagination. It, 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 it goes beyond our own thought process. Now I'm going to hear what able to do. According to the power, according to the potential that works within. What is potential? Potential is power. Potential is ability. Potential is substance. The ability to do this comes from God. Power, the exorcism. Yes, That's the authority yes, that comes from God. Yes, and substance is that what we need to have. Because you see, God can create and He doesn't need anything to do it. Yes, we are innovative. It takes something for us to have yes, in order to make something else with. Yes, but God does not need anything, He can make what He wants yes. out of nothing. And we can take the extreme opposites and call out that which he wants to be from that which appears that will never be. In other words, he can say to darkness, let there be light. And light will come out of darkness. Oh, somebody's going to hear that. But how can light come out of darkness when there's no light manufactured by anybody? It does not have to be because what he says happens. Let there be. And, and, and whatever was going to come had to wait to what he would say after the beat. Let there be what? Let there be light. Now, the interesting part is that all of us understand quite clearly that God can do anything. We understand that. But the essence of this scripture is not to talk about what God can do in and of himself because we know he can do it. But, but, but the point is what we are able to do with what he gives to us. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that worketh in us. We have to come to the resolve that God wants power to work within us. I know we love to get up in the morning and say, hey God, will you come and fix me breakfast? But God is saying, I want you to understand that I made provision for you. You take your own bacon and eggs and you make that up yourself. Make your own biscuit because I've given you the power to do it. I've given the hand to Brother John. I've given you power to bring this church to where it all to be. And I give it to you. You have the potential to carry this church for me down where it is. Yeah. 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 Substance. Yeah. Ability. Yeah. Authority. You can have ability and not authority to utilize it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Mm. And then you can have authority and no ability. Yeah. But you need ability and authority. Yeah. And you need substance. And let's now go back and I have about eight minutes. Is it all right if I take the eight? Let's look at the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. And it was without form and was void. And so he decided that's not really the way it ought to be. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow my spirit to hover or to take control of the waters because there was no separation of water and land at that time. Yeah. So I'll allow my spirit to take control. Mm. Notice that he did not use tangible means 
to bring order to a disorderly creation. But he let the highest power and force in the earth come to the fore, and that was his spirit. So his spirit took control of, of, of an earth that was without form and that was void and brought to it ah, some semblance of order so that not he could use for himself, but for mankind. How many know today that it takes the anointing of God to bring order where there's disorder and to bring to the fore the things that need to be brought? Only God can do that through his anointing. I don't know why that we feel that we can do better than God. If God had to use his spirit in that situation, don't you know we need to use his spirit equally as well? Preach Bishop. Somebody said, well, that's God. But no, 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 no. Don't stop there. Just go to go to Genesis. I told you digressive resiliency. Go to Genesis and look at Genesis and see what happened way back then. Not something that transpired much later. But it happened way back then. And God said, let us make man. In our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dope. Many of them. Let's make them in our image and after our likeness and let them have dope. Many of them. It was on the impact of creation that God spoke and said, Man have dominion. I'm going to tell you what he was saying was that power, that spirit that's in me, I will place in man. Man will have the potential to do what I do. Way back in Genesis, he has the potential of doing what I do. Listen to what he says. All right. Ah. And that they have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created them. And God blessed them. Yes, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I want you to think about it. Who he is, we are. The power that he has, we possess. Yes, sir. The Holy Ghost doesn't come from heaven and change character when he gets here. The Holy Ghost that comes remains constant. He does not change. So when he leaves heaven and comes into you, who he was in heaven, he is in you. The power that he has in heaven is in you. And since he is not any different from who he is, the third Right now, I'm moving into prophetic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
and I'm saying that what God has for you is greater than the imagination because I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither knew to the heart of man the things that God has for you. Right now, right now, right now, had we brought a full choir, the choir would not have been able to sit up here unless you brought some more chairs. Right. And right now, this is not large enough for that choir that God has for you. This is not large enough for the elders who God's going to send to you. This is not, this area is not large enough for the, for the kind of, of band that you uh, need to have. Thank God for who's down there and they're playing. But, but expect beyond your imagination. You have to get ready for what God wants you to do. Because, because this church, though it's located where it is, God is going to take this church and cause it to be a beacon of light to other people that come from the north, south, east, and west and see the wonders and the glory. I said, they're going to make the trip. I know that I'm right. In Nashville, I had people coming from Chattanooga, Tennessee to our morning worship over the mountain on Tuesdays and Sundays to be in service. Memphis just right around the corner. Somebody's going to hear me. These other communities are just right around the corner. And God is going to speak to them and tell them this is the place. the way that they ought to be. Yeah. And he's going to call everybody to be the way that he wants it to be. Because that's the reason that he put his trust in you. You can look at me tonight and wonder why.
together we can make a difference in this world. Well,